Oh, there's also a, a violent serial rapist murderer in this. <coughs> I only write happy stories. <laughs> this is him preparing for a date, as he calls it. Cramped as it was into the former attic above the third floor of a Victorian rooming house just off Wyandotte Street, the place was small. It was all bow needed. The room came with a bed, a small stove, some china and silver, and use of the telephone and toilet in the hall on the third floor. Bo didn't need a lot of space for what he owned. He smiled as he looked around the room. His few clothes hung from hangers, ranged along a wire strung across a back corner of the room. His sleeping bag served as sheets and blanket on the ancient mattress, and a rolled-up army blanket served as a pillow. The knives and the gun were tucked away inside his duffel bag under the bed. They were safe enough there. Old Mrs. McCready never bothered to come up here, even to clean. The other boarders, Bo figured, were old men and drunks who hardly left the rooms and would not expend the energy to climb the steep stairs to his room. Yeah, he said softly as he stepped in and shut the door. He had been patient and it had paid off. He was in and it sounded like a big score, too. Oh, baby, he said and stepped across the room to his most pleasing possession. He reached out gently and caressed her breast. She smiled gently back at him from the poster. He sighed. She was so beautiful just standing there in her grass skirt and bikini top, the sea rolling softly in behind her and the sun beginning to set behind the large red word, Hawaii. Oh, baby, he said, we're in. We made it, baby. Everything turned a romantic soft focus as Bo half closed his eyes and softly, lovingly flowed his hand, flat and smooth as a knife, over her breasts, her stomach, her thighs, and across to himself. And he continued caressing as he moved backward to the bed, his soft, focused eyes always on his one true love. Oh, baby, he moaned as he settled back onto the bed and his jeans slipped down over his hips. Oh, baby, he moaned as he closed his eyes fully and moved his hand in a gentle, caressing motion. Bo stood in his bright red bikini briefs, his dress-up underwear, selecting the clothes he would wear for his date tonight. Friday night, he thought. A great time for a date and a great time to celebrate his move into the big leagues. The camouflage fatigues he selected would go well with his black wool blend pullover. The fatigues suited him well. They had no name tags. Like him. He had lost his name years before, before he left the States. Now he took whatever name pleased him or whatever name they chose to call him. Here he was just Bo. Bo Jest. The name pleased him. The anonymous fatigues pleased him. He slipped the pullover on, then the fatigue plants and jacket. He sat on the bed and pulled on a pair of olive green socks. The military boat boots were already beside the bed, shined up and ready to go. He put them on and laced them tightly. Over at the mirror, he carefully blacked the area around his eyes. He looked at himself and smiled. He would be very handsome for his date tonight. And his date would be very beautiful. She always was. From the duffel under the bed, Bo took the belt and buckled it on. Then he took the knives and slipped each into its sheath. Bo felt his heart quicken and his breathing slow. For Bo, the act of inserting a knife into its sheath was always sensual. Inserting three knives, one after the other, was erotic. He ran his fingers gently along the fly of his fatigues and smiled. His fourth blade was ready for its sheath. He grabbed the olive ski mask from the bed and walked out, shutting the door quietly beside him. Instead of walking down the stairs and through the house, he climbed the short ladder to the roof and scurried down the iron fire escape at the side of the house. <laughs>